Top 7 Prepping Targets for Silver and Gold Stackers. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. Those new to my channel might not know that while I am passionate about stacking silver and gold, I'm also very much a prepper. I think it's so important that we develop personal preparedness and especially in the days that we are in right now. Now, I'm not a doomsday prepper. I mean, I'll have a bunker in my backyard. I don't go overboard. I'm also not a professional prepper. Channels like oh, the Urban Prepper or Canadian Prepper, the Patriot Nurse, and one of my favorites, City Prepping. Those are phenomenal channels and you can learn a lot from them. But I am more of a practical prepper. I tend to focus mostly on the basics and then I build on those basics to become more and more prepared for what I believe is coming. So let's begin by thinking about the seven most important things when it comes to prepping. Now, this is my list. Okay, this may not be yours, but these are the broad areas that I think we need to be concerned about. And stacking silver and gold is not the most important prep. In fact, I'm going to do this in reverse order. And starting at number seven, as I count down, is stacking silver and gold. It's not the most important thing, folks, like I said. But it is the primary mindset of those in our community. Now, there's nothing wrong with stacking silver and gold. You should stack silver and gold hard if you can. But what I find interesting is that when I go to uh, you know prepper channels and I listen to uh, you know the, the people and the, the you know the comments that are left and and I read articles and so forth, I find that those in the prepper community tend to neglect the silver and the gold. They tend to neglect the more monetary or fiscal type of aspects uh, about prepping. So I think that's important for us because we tend to do the complete opposite. We tend to put all the emphasis on metals as if this stuff is going to help us when everything hits the fan. I've said this many times and I'll say it again. This stuff is really important, most likely after an SHTF situation, when the reset has happened, okay, and we are coming out of a complete collapse, if you will, this stuff is going to be important, especially with barter, especially silver, okay? So I think that's important, but stacking is number seven. Make sure your gold and silver is protected. Make sure that it's hidden away. Make sure it's in a proper safe. Make sure it's you know spread out with people you uh, trust and don't tell people okay about your stack as much as possible. Try to stay uh, anonymous as much as possible too with your stack. So that's number seven. Number six, sustenance, food and water. I've said this many times that you can live an average of thirty days without food only an average of three days without water. Food and water, absolutely critical. You need to focus on sustenance more than ever right now. According to leading industry sources, grocery stores all across the United States are hyper worried about food shortages. I mean, check this out in Texas. Look at the lines in place just the other day at a food bank down there in Texas ahead of Thanksgiving. This is unprecedented, folks. Our supply chain is so fragile. Folks, if you don't know this, you got to just think back a few months. Do you remember all the toilet paper, all the cleaning products, certain foods off the shelves? And it's happening now. From big box stores to your local grocer, it's beginning to look a lot like March. Toilet paper and paper towels are disappearing from store shelves. Seems like people are getting nervous again. And that's pushing retailers to put limits on how many items you can put in your baskets. In uh, Walnut Creek, uh, I noticed that uh, the shelves were empty on that particular aisle. And uh, they were doing, uh, you know, 
you can only buy so much at one time. Panic buying is playing out around the country. I'm not saying you should buy everything, but you need to have more of a stockpile in your pantry. You need to make sure that you have survival food. That is more important now than ever before. And you need to be careful with what you prepare for with when it comes to food. A lot of people make mistakes with buying MREs or whatever it is with a very short shelf life, five years or less. And sometimes, depending on where you buy this stuff, the food could have already expired. You need to be very careful about buying large quantities of, of foods that are nearing expiration dates. So, you know, I, I get number 10 cans uh, from Mountain House. I have a pile of that. I bought that. Um, you know, about eight years ago, that has a, a 25 year shelf life. And it doesn't mean that that food is not viable even after 25 years. It could be 30 years or 35 years. All right. Uh, the nutrients tend to, you know, uh, lessen the nutrient, uh, the nutritional value, I should say, lessens over time. But that's where, you know, multivitamins and other sources of food can help uh, make up for that. So you want long term food stores. You also want to make sure that the food that you're buying isn't gross, okay? I've eaten Mountain House's product. They're they're phenomenal. They really do taste good. And you don't want stuff that's, you know, high in, uh, you know, salt and MSG preservatives, all that garbage that will just, you know, do a number on you and make you sick. So food, food is very important. Water, I talk about this too. You know, when it comes to sustenance, you need to have a water supply that you can rely on, filtration systems. Um, you know, a well, storage containers, the work. So sustenance, very important. You start focusing on that now and top off your pantries before the next wave of panic ensues. So that's number six. Number five, shelter, land, okay? But your house may not be the best place for you to shelter in. You know, I've talked about whether or not bugging in or bugging out makes sense. Uh, for me and where I live uh, in my suburban area, I feel confident that at least for quite a while, actually, I can bug in. So I've been focusing most on bugging in. If I lived in the city, then I would be you know, much more concerned about bugging out. And finding the right land is important too. So you want to find land that has uh, enough uh, open area for a garden, maybe some water that is on the property or close by. Number four, that's personal protection. I've shown and talked about my uh, weapon stash. I've talked about understanding how to you know, protect yourself, not just with guns, but with other items. It's important to have a security system. I am, <laughs> this is one of the areas where Yankee is improving his practical preps. I had a dog that uh, unfortunately died uh, last week and uh, while he wasn't a guard dog he wasn't gonna you know chew somebody to pieces he was a great alarm system he would bark when people would even come close and that would help us know oh, there's someone coming up to the house don't have that anymore and one of the things that I've been wanting to do now for probably since I started uh, prepping is put in a good uh, video security system around my house I've narrowed it down to one that I think is just uh, perfect for me, and I will be buying that this Christmas. Personal protection. One of the seven critical prepper rules that us stackers need to be focused on. Number three, your personal health. Folks, staying healthy is, I think, one of the most important preps you can do. Now, I know some of you out there are saying, Yankee, <laughs> that's easier said than done. I got bad genes, okay? <laughs> My parents, overweight, had a lot of uh, medical issues. I've inherited that. There's not a lot I can do, Yankee. Well, that is true to some extent. Yes, we can't pick our genes. Um, and, and for some of us, it's a lot harder to stay healthy. But I'm telling you right now, folks, it's important that you do everything you can to get healthy and stay healthy as much as is within, is within your power. 
okay? That's exercising, that's lowering your caloric intake, folks. COVID-19, I had it, but not the illness. <laughs> I got the COVID-19 pounds, okay? And I don't know about you out there watching this, but during the last six months, it has been extraordinarily difficult not to gain weight. So what am I doing now? Well, I, I have been biking quite a bit, trying to you know get that weight down, but with the weather, it's also difficult to get outside. My son, Little Stacks, and I just joined a fitness club. And it's great to have a young 16-year-old who is fired up <laughs> to work out with his father. And it's a great time to you know spend with my, my son as well. So that's another way that I hope and expect to trim off that COVID-19. <laughs> I want those 19 pounds gone. All right, so I encourage you, get healthy and stay healthy if you can. Make sure your dental health is in order too. If you've ever had a toothache, okay, you know what I'm talking about. In an SHTF scenario, a toothache could be an immense burden, an incredible struggle. So keep your teeth in good shape. Brush and floss. I know I sound like your dad now, but really, that is important. And also, for those who do have to take regular medications, Consider stocking up on some of those critical medications. I am blessed not to have any meds that I have to take on a daily basis. And I'm going to do everything I can in my power to keep that from happening. But if you do have to take blood pressure medicine or a statin or something else, or you're for a diabetic, you need to think ahead about those supplies. Number two, the second prepper rule for silver and gold stackers is skills. Folks, we need to make sure that our skills will help us during a crisis. Whether that be uh, the personal protection that I was talking about. If you uh, have a weapon, you should have the skills to know how to use that weapon effectively. You need training. You need to exercise. Uh, you're training at the range and practice. Um, skills like gardening. I grew up um, with my dad gardening. My dad had a very large garden and I learned a lot from him. Now, this is another area that I need to get better at. My land is not well suited for a lot of sunlight. So I've been thinking about how best to clear out some trees, how best to make use of the land that I have to grow my own vegetables. I'm also looking into buying heirloom seeds soon. So whether it be a few pots on your deck or a big expanse of land that you've called, you know, tilled and, and turned into a garden, well, you need to have those skills. Not just stacking food, okay, in a you know, number 10 can, but sustainable food production. Another thing that uh, is important is to understand how your current skills may not be applicable during an SHTF. What if, like me, you're an IT expert? My career for over 30 years has been in information technology. There is a scenario that I can easily see where my skills and knowledge mean absolutely nothing. I need skills that really matter. That's number two, skills. And number one, the most important prepping rule for silver and gold stackers mindset. This one factor, I believe, instructs all the other six. I've said this before, but I'm not an optimist. I'm also not a pessimist. I'm a realist. In my job, I've had to evaluate risk. And I like to consider risk and, and decide on the best way to address risks. And there are three ways, really, three broad ways to address risk. One is avoidance. Two is mitigation. And the third is acceptance. So avoidance. Maybe you live in the city and you need to avoid that risk. You need to move out. Okay. 
but you need to have the mindset that that is an important thing to avoid. Maybe maybe it's growing your own food, like I mentioned before. I need to avoid running out of food, and I have to, you know, get into a sustain, uh, sustainable gardening avoidance mitigation. I talked about my weight, right? I need to lower my weight, mitigate the risk to my health, right? Stacking, gold and silver. That helps us mitigate the risk of a fiat dollar collapse, right? Stagflation, hyperinflation. There's a reason we stack silver and gold. And the last thing is acceptance. My folks are in their 80s. My dad's going to be turning uh, 88 at the end of uh, December. They're not bugging out, okay? They know <laughs> that if everything you know goes to hell in a handbasket, they are going to have to stay put. They've accepted that fact, okay? They try to mitigate some of the risks themselves, but some things you just can't prepare for. A meteor <laughs> hitting the earth where you live. That's one of those risks where you just might have to except at least I am. But anyways, that is probably the number one rule of prepping for us silver and gold stackers. Mindset. Get in the right uh, uh, mindset to accept the possibility that we're going to need all these preps. That's a hard thing to do. We are hardwired for normalcy bias. Normalcy bias, meaning it's whatever's normal, whatever is happening now is going to continue happening forever. It is something that I find you know, certain people are, 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 have a hard time not doing. My wife, Mrs. Yankee, for one of them. It's just difficult for her to see the risks and to really want to uh, address them. But it's very important that we do. And I hope that these seven you know, important preps for us silver and gold stackers will resonate with you. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of this video. I really appreciate it if you would like this video too and share it. This is important for people to hear and to learn. So anyways, thanks so much for watching and I hope your day is a-okay.